How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Blocks Talks. I know it's been a little bit, but we're back, finally. Though, unfortunately, we're back with some news that huh, saddens me deeply. I hope to see some Fs in today's comment section, because yesterday, we just lost the FNAF fan game of all time. If you haven't seen already, I'm, of course, talking about the very disappointing news that LEGO FNAF was taken down via a DMCA from LEGO themselves. Absolutely insane news that came out of nowhere, basically. But that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hope you're all excited for this info. We actually have the full DMCA that we're going to be taking a look at, so things might get a little bit complicated, but hopefully you can stick with me. I've made it uh, pretty simple and easy to follow. So yeah, I'd say without further ado, if you're brand new, consider subscribing. We're almost at 50k. Hit the like button if you want to see more Blocks Talks. And now, let's talk about LEGO FNAF. So, I'm sure you've actually seen some gameplay of LEGO FNAF if you're a fan of my channel. I did, I think, three videos on the game. I know Daco played it, I believe Fusion played it, so it got some pretty wide coverage here on YouTube. And it's basically just the basic FNAF 1 gameplay, but reskinned with some LEGO aesthetics. Everything in the game, all the characters, the settings, even the HUD UI is made out of LEGO. It was a pretty interesting game, and even though it was very similar to FNAF 1, it still had some extra details that made it a bit different, such as switching up some mechanics, a uh, shop that you can spend your currency in, and also a few more challenges and easter eggs in the custom night menu. It was very fun, I enjoyed it, though I was a little bit skeptical for reasons we're going to get into shortly, but overall it was a fun time, everyone enjoyed it, they had FNAF uh, 2 and FNAF 3 planned, so a full trilogy of LEGO FNAF games, and the coast was clear, you know, nothing seemed amiss. However, like I said, some people were skeptical, myself included, because it was just FNAF 1, reskinned. It still had the same mechanics and characters and settings and stuff like that. So basically, some people would say it was a free version of FNAF, just with a bit more upgrades posted on Game Jolt. Which I'm sure, as we all know by now, uh, remaking the first couple FNAF games and tweaking just a few things uh, does run the risk of getting your game taken down by Scott himself. Most popular example with this is Fiznom, aka Phil Morgs, another FNAF game open source based on FNAF 2 that was taken down by Scott. But all was good because if we look at the Game Jolt page for LEGO FNAF 2, you can see that they actually do require you have the game installed and purchased before you can even get into the rest of the game. So, what's the issue there? If you have FNAF 2, you know, you're set. You can't really call it a free version of FNAF 2 or FNAF 1 if you've already purchased and bought FNAF 1 and 2 on Steam. So, problem solved, right? Well, you see, about that three years ago, yes, three years ago, we're going pretty far back now, the 64th gamer who you may know for their Real to Real project, which I guess fits with the theme of this video, was also taken down by the powerful rat Trolls Entertainment Cheese himself couple days ago. Seems like all the big companies are going after fan games nowadays, so 64th Gamer, another F in chat. But you can see here in the tweet, Welp, Real to Real has been shut down by Trolls Entertainment Cheese. Twas a fun few years working on it, and I hope the community has enjoyed it. Guess I got animatronic projects taken down by Scott Cawthon, Aaron Fector, and Chuck E. Cheese under my belt now. <laughs> what a metal to hold. So Chuck E. Cheese is Real to Real. Aaron Fector, I believe, was just another uh, similar project to Real to Real that featured the Rock of Fire Explosion characters from Showbiz Pizza Place, which is owned and operated by uh, Creative Engineering, which was made by Aaron Fector. But Scott Cawthon, let's go back to this Reddit post, because this is 64th Gamer's updated version of FNAF 1. And you can see a full video here. It's got a whole bunch of different UI changes, as you can see here in the menu. Some very clean animations, but overall, it's pretty similar to FNAF 1, and I believe their goal was to release it at some point. However, this would be one of the first times we've seen Scott step in and actually take action. He said, I know I'm a bit late to this conversation, but I wanted to comment on it. Everyone here knows that I've tried to be very supportive of the fan game community, I think, but this game falls a little outside of that and into a strange gray area. After all, I'm obviously still selling those games and have to remove free copies of them all the time from sites like Game Jolt. So while this project is really impressive, it falls on that line between fan creation and being a free copy of FNAF 1. And this is the key part here. I know that it apparently checks to see if you have the original game first, but it still doesn't change the fact that this is basically the original game being uploaded and hosted by someone other than me, even if done and more polished than my original game. So Scott says it outright here. Even if your fan game checks to see if you have the original games purchased and downloaded, you still can't upload your fan game, which is why I was skeptical of this. However, you may be thinking, why am I talking about this? The DMCA wasn't even from Scott, it was from LEGO. Well, now let's move on to the actual post, which talks about 
the DMCA. We'll keep it brief, due to a DMCA takedown notice given to us by the LEGO Corporation, we have had to take down the LEGO FNAF 1 game jolt page, LEGO FNAF 1 cannot be distributed lawfully anymore, and the development of LEGO FNAF 2 will not be continued. They also go on to say this was completely unexpected by the LEGO FNAF dev team, we were all expecting, if anything, a DMCA takedown on behalf of Scott. Now, honestly, if, if you want my two cents, I don't think you should be ex expecting any DMCA takedowns revolving around your fan game. Maybe just, you know, if you're running that risk, maybe don't. That's my hot take, though. I think it's a little crazy that they were like, well, we can put all this hard work into this fan game, but it could also be taken down by Scott. <laughs> However, now that this has happened, we see how much of an oversight we made with the distribution of LEGO FNAF. You don't say. While we of course made no profit off of LEGO FNAF, a precaution we took to prevent a takedown from Scott was requiring the purchase of the original FNAF game on Steam in order to play LEGO FNAF. Which they neglect to mention this comment by Scott that says, yeah, no, that doesn't fly. This is another key moment. What we didn't consider with this idea is that while we didn't profit off of the LEGO brand, we were directly profit off of it to Scott. Directing profit, sorry. So basically, if someone wanted to play LEGO FNAF, they would have to purchase FNAF. Which obviously has been a major point I've been trying to talk about in this video, but, you know, Scott's comment aside, if someone did want to play LEGO FNAF, they would have to go out and purchase FNAF. Therefore, you know, Scott gets money off of that purchase because someone wanted to play a game that has the LEGO branding. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically, even though they are not profiting off it, Scott is, and since it's a LEGO lego game scott is technically profiting off a lego you know unofficial product and actually they link to the full dmca which i do have pulled up right here as you can see it's a pretty beefy one but i've highlighted and bolded and underlined some pretty important subjects that i want to talk about in the dmca itself we are providing you this letter of notification to make you aware of material on your network or system that infringes the exclusive intellectual property rights of lego the lego group holds exclusive worldwide uh, worldwide rights to the lego intellectual property including but not limited to the famous lego world mark the famous red square lego logo and the minifigure figurine they go on to say how these are all registered and copyrighted material we affirm that the undersigned is authorized to act on behalf of the lego group whose exclusive intellectual property rights we believe to be infringed as described herein they go on to repeat it as you are certainly aware our client is the owner of the world famous lego by the way i don't know why they keep using the world world famous you know it seems a little a little egotistical but you know they're trying to get their point across i respect it basically they just go on to say that they have the rights over these copyrighted materials the logo for lego the the giant red square lego logo and also the minifigure figurines accordingly we hereby demand that you immediately remove or disable access to the infringing material available at this is the url for lego fnaf for trademark infringement lego landing and again the url we have good faith believe that the use of these trademarks and copyrighted images described above in connection with the domain and URLs described above is not authorized by the trademark owner, and such use is not otherwise permissible under applicable law. This letter is provided without prejudice to any claims or remedies the LEGO group may have in connection with this matter whatsoever, all of which are expressively reserved. The LEGO group reserves the right to take further action without notice. Sincerely, the LEGO group brand protection. Wow, I absolutely hate legal wards that lawyers are forced to use in their letters so basically the quick rundown the tldr if you don't want me to <laughs> read through that which i mean i guess you just watched already is that the dev team behind lego fnaf did not have the rights they were not authorized to use the lego brand name and uh, minifigures in their project if they had reached out prior maybe they would have uh, been allowed access but because they without you know permission use the lego brand the lego logo again the the patented lego figurines that's why it was removed and i know a lot of people have been saying oh but lego doesn't own the rights to you know interlocking brick systems and it's true they don't but they you know very specifically call out the the minifigures themselves i have seen a lot of outrage uh mostly on twitter people saying like bring back lego fnaf which i'm just gonna say right now i don't think it's gonna happen in all fairness you know, memes aside, it was completely in LEGO's right to take down this project. To be fair, it doesn't directly hurt LEGO. Yes, it does some things that I'm sure LEGO isn't, you know, pleased with, such as giving money to Scott indirectly because you need to have FNAF 1 installed. Working with a brand, an IP, FNAF, that 
has worked with a competitor of Lego in the past, McFarlane, which I don't think would have been a factor, but I'm sure it's also, you know, something that they wouldn't count out. And again, just the overall them using the Lego brand and logos and mini figures and all that stuff without permission. Well, that's my stance on it. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Certainly one of the strangest <laughs> situations I've seen in the FNAF community uh, in quite a while, but that's going to do it for this Blocks Talks video. Again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.